Today, I'm gonna show you how to create an awesome birthday style celebration photo. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm so excited about today's episode because we're celebrating Flurn's fifth birthday. That's right, it's been five years since I started recording Photoshop and photography episodes. We've got hundreds and hundreds of free episodes out there on YouTube. And to celebrate, we're holding a 30% off sale on flurn.com. And we created a really cool image for the sale. We basically just photographed me making crazy faces with a birthday cake and then turn it into this thing where I've got this giant head and the birthday cake is huge and things like that. We just put it on Instagram and a ton of people were asking, how did you actually make this photo? Why don't you make a tutorial on how you made this photo? So that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. We're gonna show you how we actually made our birthday promo photo. All right guys, we got a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image. This is straight out of the camera. This is basically just me making a crazy face with a piece of cake. And before we did the photo shoot, we sketched everything out. We knew we wanted to have this be a five layer cake for our five year anniversary. Um, but all we could find was a three layer cake. So who, we knew we were gonna have to Photoshop that. And then of course we've got me making a crazy face here and some nice lights on the background. All right, so we're gonna turn this into our five year anniversary image. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get me cut out from the background with this cake. So let's go ahead and grab our magic wand tool, W for the magic wand tool. And then we're gonna bring our tolerance up yeah, about 12 or so, okay? And now basically the idea is I wanna click on our background. I shot this on a white seamless background, but it's not completely white. And that happens, we just didn't have a ton of light on the background itself. So that's why I'm cutting myself out. Okay, now with our magic wand tool, I'm gonna hold shift and click a few times and that's just going to allow me to add to my selection each time I shift click all around my image. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and we gotta make sure we get everything here. So like under my arm here, there we go. All right, that's selected, hold down shift and add to our selection in those areas. All right, get that one too. Okay, so now that we have our selection, which is most of the background, there we go looking pretty good. I'm gonna click on my layer mask button. There we go, and it's gonna go ahead and cut me out. Now it's actually the opposite of what we want. So we're gonna click on our layer mask and hit Command I to invert that. There we go, we can see I'm on a transparent background. And then I'm gonna grab my adjustment layers. We're gonna go to solid color, and I'm gonna go up here to white. And let's go ahead and pull that down. There we go. So now I'm cut out of my background on a perfectly white background. Looks awesome. There are a couple of things we want to do though, like areas around the hair looks kind of funky and I've uh, <laughs> got a bit of arm hair as well. So we need to clean that up as well. So not a big deal. It's actually relatively easy to do. Just click on your layer mask. We're going to go to select and then down to refine mask. Okay. Now within refine mask, there's a really awesome tool right over here. This is your refine radius tool. This is a really great tool when you need to paint areas like hair. If you have anything that looks like this, um, that areas like hair or clouds, something that really uh, doesn't have a clear edge to it, the refine radius tool is perfect. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to paint right here around the area of my hair. And this is the area that I just want to kind of clean up my selection just a little bit. So I'm just going to paint right there and let go and Photoshop's automatically going to figure out what it wants to do. Basically, it's going to say, okay, cool. You want that to add to your layer mask. So we'll go ahead and add that to your layer mask. All right, looking good. Cake looks good. We're going to do the same thing with my arm hair here. So let's go ahead and uh, paint that in. We just want to make sure our selections are looking really good. Okay, we'll do this right over there. And down here on the bottom too. All right, cool. All right didn't seem to work there on the bottom. We'll just do that manually in just a second. All right, but everywhere else looks pretty good. So let's hit okay here. And there we go, we're cut out from our background. Now here on the bottom, I'm just gonna do this manually real quick. Uh, we'll just grab our brush tool and we're just gonna paint black right over here. 
There we go. And clean that up a little bit. Okay, great. So now I'm cut out of the background. This looks real cool. I can move me anywhere around the image. Um, looks like on my layer mask, I got one little place right there I need to fix up. Okay, I can move me anywhere around the image and we're good to go. So the next thing I need to do, I need to make this cake a lot bigger because we want to make this like a huge birthday style cake and we want it to be five layers. So now I want to just edit that cake and I don't want to worry about a layer mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate my background, my layer zero here. So we have a duplicate copy. Then I'm going to right click on my layer mask and go to apply layer mask. Now this is a really nice tool. I, I have a backup copy here if I ever need to go back, but now I can just select out my cake or my head or whatever I need to. And I don't have to worry about a layer mask. It makes it a lot easier to actually edit this way. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to go make a selection around our cake. So I'm going to grab our lasso tool. We'll go with the polygonal lasso tool. Okay. And there we go. We just want to make a selection right there on the bottom of the cardboard, right there around the cake. And then I'm going to hit control or command J right in that selection. And that's going to duplicate that cake to a new layer. So if I grab my move tool, there we go. I've got the cake on a new layer. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is let's blend these together, okay? Because I, I want this cake to be five layers, not three layers. So we'll go ahead and lower our opacity, and I'm going to bring this right up to about there. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Just uh, make sure your counting skills are, are accurate there. All right, I'm going to bring that up to the top, and then I'm going to click on a layer mask on this layer, and I'm going to paint black on my layer mask right over here. And that's just going to help all these kind of blend together a little bit. Choose a nice soft edge brush and there we go. All right, cool. Looking good. Now we got a little bit of like area that's kind of like frosting duplicated there. So I'm just going to grab my clone stamp tool and we're going to clone stamp from this layer over to that layer. There we go. So S for the clone stamp tool. Just go ahead and take care of the frosting. I don't mind the frosting on the very top layer because it kind of makes it look unique, but we don't want it to be duplicated. All right, cool. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we've got our five layer birthday cake instead of our three layer. And really that wasn't too hard. We just duplicated our cake, moved it up and masked it back in. Okay, so now what we've got, we've got our cake layer here Okay, and we've still got our original cake. So now what we're going to do again, I'm going to merge all these together again because I, I want it to act the same. Again, I, I want basically the additions to the cake to be on the same layer as the cake. So I'm going to shift click all of those layers and hit control or command E and that merges them all back together again. So now it's like I've got one photo. Uh, now instead of a three layer cake, I've got a five layer cake, which is pretty cool. Didn't take too long to do. Okay. Now to make the cake bigger, we're basically going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to turn it into a selection and I'm going to duplicate that to its own layer. And then I'm just going to make that bigger using the move tool. Okay. So again, let's grab our lasso tool. I'm going to click right around here. There we go. Making it a selection. All right. And hit enter. And now we have the exact cake we want. So we're going to hit controller command J on that cake. And then I can just make it bigger, really easy to do. Just hit control or command T and we can make our cake way bigger. <laughs> All right. And we can change the size of this later. It, it doesn't have to be exactly this size. We can always hit command T and make it smaller if we want. But this was done uh, basically to celebrate our birthday sale. We, I sketched out a quick image and I was like, man, it'd be awesome to have like a super giant cake that I was holding. And um, so we sketched it out and Basically what we're doing now is just in Photoshop, we're just like recreating the sketch. Okay, so we've got our giant cake. That looks really good. Now on our background, what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and crop this in, give it a little bit more space on the top here. So I'm gonna hit C for my crop tool and I'm just gonna grab this crop bar. There we go. And give us a little bit more space there on the top. Okay, so we've got our giant cake over here and we've got me. Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to make my head look like it's giant as well, but I need to make it fit into the rest of my body. So I'm going to have to make the neck a bit smaller. So we're going to make the head big and then we're going to make the neck small. 
So to start off, we're going to click on the layer with me on it. And we're going to zoom in here. And then I'm just going to grab our polygonal lasso tool again. We're going to make a selection right around here. There we go. And hit enter. And then on that layer, we're just going to hit again, control or command J to duplicate that. Okay. So now we've got another version of my head. All right, let's go ahead and make it big. We're going to hit control or command T and I'm just going to stretch this out to make it really nice and big. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit as well. All right, cool. And that looks really fun there. Let's hit enter there. And there we've got our big version of our head. The only thing now is that it doesn't line up with what's going on here on the body, right? We need to make the neck area actually like line up with the rest of the body. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna use the liquify tool. It's not hard to do at all. We're just gonna go up to filter and then down here to liquify. Okay, so here on the neck, there we go. We can hit show backdrop and that's gonna give me a better idea of what I'm actually doing with this layer. We're gonna use the forward warp tool here there we go. And basically how this works is you just want to like kind of push and pull the layer around to be wherever you need it to be. Now, whenever I'm doing this sort of thing, I don't really expect to get it perfect the first go round. So let's go ahead and hit OK. I just basically pushed in that side of the neck and this side. Let's hit OK there. There we go. And we can see kind of suck that in. Now here on this layer itself, we're going to put a layer mask on there. And that way it's going to make the original head invisible. Okay, so we're going to be able to get our new giant head in the right place. So just putting a layer mask on there, and then we've got our new giant head. <laughs> there we go, that we kind of want to fit in place there. All right, well, let's see if that's going to work there. So we've got our giant head. It looks all right on the back there. We're going to put a layer mask on there, and I'm going to try to blend these together. Okay, so with a soft edge brush, I'm going to paint black on this layer mask. And that's going to help allow these layers to blend together. And in this case, it's relatively simple to do because, there we go, because it's the same shirt. It's not, you know, it, it's not like I'm trying to match like two completely different photos. It's the exact same photo, really. It's just a different version of it. All right. And we're going to mask this collar in here. All right. There we go. That looks pretty fun, too. Now, it's not exactly where we want it to be. I need this collar to be brought down a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to click on our layer again, and we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Liquify. Okay, and now what we can do is that we can actually bring this collar down to kind of match the other one. Okay, there we go. And that's just going to help save us a little bit of blending there. All right, there we go. So there's the before. And the after, it just kind of like brings it down. Now it's not perfect. This is not something I, I would submit to a client like right like it is right now, but for like a quick birthday type image, it's totally good enough and it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, cool. So now we have my big head brought down into a small neck. Let's just do a little bit more layer masking. There we go, just to make sure it blends in really nice. And we're just gonna clean up the back of the neck there. All right, <laughs> that looks awesome. All right, so we've got our giant cake and we've got our giant head. And now I can still make my cake bigger if I want to. There we go, which I, I, I totally am gonna make that way bigger because it's just more fun that way. All right, there we go. Now, as our last step here, I got this image from Adobe Stock. This is just a birthday cake, a birthday candle cake here. Birthday candle cake. You know what they are, they're birthday candles. We're just gonna click and drag from one image to the other. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit W for the magic wand tool and go ahead and just click on the outside of that, turning it into a selection. We're gonna click on our layer mask and I'm gonna hit control or command I on the layer mask. And that's just going to get us uh, with our background cut out now. Okay, now I don't need the two there either. So we're gonna, again, use the lasso tool. We're using the polygonal lasso tool here to make a selection, okay? And here on our layer mask, I'm gonna go to edit and down to fill, and we're gonna fill that with black, okay? Anything black on a layer mask is gonna be invisible. All right, that looks cool. Now I wanna bring this below our cake. So we're gonna click and drag this below the cake, okay? And then we're gonna hit Control or Command T for our transform, and then we want this 
five to be right up here at the top of our cake. All right, looking good. Now I need a little bit more space. So I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool and click and drag that up. There we go. Looking good. And because I use this color fill adjustment layer, it's automatically gonna fill. So if I have a, if anytime I change my crop in my image, it, the color, color fill layer is gonna automatically fill in the rest. So I don't have to worry about getting the perfect crop because this just kind of like, anytime I make this image smaller or larger, the color fill just fills everything in. Okay, now I kind of want to get rid of this little flame up there and the, the little wick because I, I don't think it looks real at all. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't help at all. So we're just going to use, again, the polygonal lasso tool. There we go. Make that a selection, hit enter. And then here on our layer mask, we're going to fill this with black. There we go, to make that invisible. All right, let's make this just a little bit smaller. There we go. And then the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to hue saturation. Okay. And I'm going to clip this to my candle layer. So we're going to right click on here and go to create a clipping mask. And that's going to make sure that the hue saturation layer only affects the candle layer. Okay. And then we're just going to bring our hue over to the right until we match our cake. I want the five to match the rest of the cake. All right. That's awesome there. This is so cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and do our final crop here just to get the image exactly how we want it to be, getting ready for social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you have it. <laughs> I think it's an awesome image. So pretty simple effect, guys. We started off with our image here. Let's just go ahead and show you guys what we started with, me and a smaller cake on a, uh, on a white backdrop there. And then let's go ahead and make that invisible. We added a white background. We cut me out of the background, added a little more layers to the cake. There we go. We added our cake and made it gigantic. And then we went ahead and created our head. We used the liquify tool to pull in my neck a little bit and uh, make it match with the rest of my collar. And then we had a birthday candle and then colored it on the top. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. This image was so much fun to make, and I'm so excited to announce our five-year birthday. It seems like just yesterday I was recording episodes out of my house, and now this has basically turned into a real company, and it still surprises me today. So, guys, thanks so much for your support. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone.